how do I get to Burns? Okay, what happens here? Well, I am... <coughs> we're snowbirds. We typically go back to Oregon for Christmas. We've got family there, kids, grandkids. We've got some down here, too. But we, we go back. Well, this year, my wife had a knee replacement. And it turned into a big deal. So we were kind of stuck in Oregon. And I, my book was stuck, too. Um, this book. Not done. Working on it. It's months late. I'm working on the book. And I am the... Um, <coughs> care provider for my wife, who's really in bad shape. She needed weeks and weeks and weeks of therapy. And I'm sitting there in between ice packs and meds and back and forth to the doctors and stuff like that. I'm going to work on my computer. And uh, middle of the night in January, in comes this email. And it's um, Victoria Sharp, a young girl. And she was the only one who was released. Um, and she did a telephone interview with a radio host, which is up on my blog and website, so you can listen to that. But she was just terrified. And she told, she told about what had happened and went into hiding. But this was sent to me with the expectation that I would do something with it. Uh, what am I going to do with it? I'm sitting here trying to finish my book. And this is really bad stuff. And it's, in, it's in Oregon, and I'm in Oregon. And I know people in Oregon. What's going on here? Um, so I started, my, my blog gets a lot of traffic. I have two websites. For the novels, it's just an author site www, my name, John Trudell, J-O-H-N-T-R-U-D-E-L.com. That's all stuff about my books. But I keep touching real stuff, like, uh, oh, the, the tearing down the barricades, or what does an EMP weapon really do, and stuff like that, and what's happening in the real world, and what about this uh, Iran Treaty. So that's my blog. And the blog gets a lot of attention, probably gets more attention than my books. And certainly once I'll burns and um, collect this stuff. So what I what I spent January doing is putting all my antenna out, collecting what was going on there, and also talking to people. Uh, some in the legislature. Okay, off the record. One of the things I do is I I always protect my sources. Okay. <coughs> Um, so what I have done is I have kind of collected all of the facts and opinions and evidence that I could about the events leading up to uh, the Burns event, which is, of course, the Finnegan shooting, but it started a decade, a decade or more before then. Um, and I don't know how much, let's see, I'll, I'll kind of give you some highlights. If you want details, you go to, just go to the one about uh, who's to bless and who's to blame for Burns. And I've got the interviews up there, I've got some pictures. Um, but the short version of the story, and if it's taken too long away in your eyes, this is going to be 10 minutes. Um, Burns is probably, it's one of the most remote towns in Oregon. It's just out in the middle of nowhere. It's over in central eastern Oregon. And um, it's in Harney County, which is the forest Oregon um, county. Okay, it's just there. Very hard to get to. And in the wintertime, particularly. So what is going on in Burns? And what's going on with these ranchers? And what were they trying to do? And was there an occupation? Uh, there really wasn't. Um, 
What happened was there were ranchers called the Hammonds. Everybody knows the Bundys here because they're in Arizona. Does everybody know the Hammonds? Yeah. And well, the Hammonds were, were ranchers in Oregon. And it's a different story than the Bundy story, except for one thing the government wants the land. Okay, there's the common thread. But what happened with the Hammonds is it's very dry country. We're going back two decades. And the way they manage forests in the US, Lord knows why, is we don't cut off the underbrush like the Indians do and everything else. So if you get a wildfire, it spreads. And the best practice back in the day was if there was a wildfire heading for your property, you set a backfire to stop it. And that was common practice. It was also Bureau of Land Management best practice. So this very easygoing kind of guy, I've, I've never met him face to face, but uh, he's not confrontational at all. He sends his grandkid out to set a backfire, and the kid screws up. Whatever the backfire gets out of control, burns some forest. It's just what happens. It was just normal 15, 20 years ago. All this time, the government is grinding along, saying you've damaged our property, you're liable, and blah, blah, blah. And it comes and it goes. And, and of course, they have infinite resources. And this goes on and on and on. Obama gets elected. And finally, it goes before a federal judge. And to get the details right, you really need a lawyer and you need evidence in front of you. I'm just giving you the broad strokes. But essentially, the judge says, um, yeah, you. They had all these charges against the Hammonds, a whole list of them. They were all dismissed except for two. And the two charges were arson about setting this fire, which they'd admitted to. Okay, yeah, we set a backfire. There was no, they admitted that 20 years ago, 15 years ago, whatever it happened. And so, yeah, we, we set a backfire and got out of control. Um, and all those years, the Hammonds thought that the fire had been started by lightning. That may be wrong, but we'll get to that in a few minutes. But, um, anyway, so here's this judge. The judge said, no, you did something wrong. It's a big deal. The government wants to do something about it. And you admitted to it anyway, so you're guilty. And he gives them a minimum sentence of whatever it was, three months, six months. Okay, so they went to go to jail for setting a fire. But they had no intention of harming anybody. They served their time. They let them out of jail. The federal government, the Obama government, comes down and sell them the money. They prosecuted them under a terrorism law just after 9-11. Okay, so now you're terrorists, and there's a minimum sentence of whatever it is, 10 years or something like that. And they say, the, the judge had, the judge who decided your case had no authority to give you a short sentence. And furthermore, when you agreed to take the short sentence, <coughs> you kind of, the court got an agreement that you wouldn't appeal anything. Give you three months and you won't appeal or pass us. You did your three months and the deal's off and you get 10 years or whatever, and you can't appeal it. And that's when everybody, that's the, the Bundys and everybody heard about that. And they said, that's terrible. And from talking to people, I wasn't there, but why ranchers were coming in from out of state is to help the Hammonds by telling them, don't deal with the federal government, get the sheriff. Okay, the, the whole message of the Mondays and why they went there, the sheriff can stop this. And the locals have jurisdiction if they assert themselves. Well, by the time everybody arrives, the Hammonds are back in prison. So they're not even there. It's the middle of the winter and you're in the middle of nowhere. So what they do, is here's this empty refuge and there's different stories about that. It was empty, it was unlocked, the keys were on the door. Some said they invited them to use it. They camped there, okay? It wasn't a standoff. I mean, while they were there, um, Civilians came and left, law enforcement came and left. Nobody was barred from using this, this 
bird sanctuary. Nobody was there. It's in the middle of the winter. I haven't any birds there. Okay. And so they're just camped out there. And the discussions go on and on and on. And I'm kind of watching this, and I'm kind of... Um, and this is before it all happens. I'm kind of watching it. Call me the FBI director. I think is basically a good guy. I don't think very many people in New York know these days. But I, th I thought he was kind of keeping a lid on us. I'm just sort of watching casually. And then one night, it all falls apart. And there's the shooting and the ambush and everything else. And he's just frantic for the Victoria task that winds up with him. Shooting Victoria Sharp uh, winds up in my in tray. And I go, wow. Okay. And what changed was um, there really was very little point for anybody to stay there. Uh, the Hammonds were back in jail. The local sheriff was not very supportive. But it was getting a lot of attention in the news because it's kind of an outrageous thing. And the sheriff of the next town over, uh, a larger town, John Day, you say the next town over, in that part of Oregon is like 150 miles or something. It's a long way. Um, it's friendly. And so they want to talk and everything. And uh, he meets with the local law enforcement. He meets with the sheriff. They film it and everything. I go, yeah, we'll probably be leaving in a week. But they had this meeting to go to with the next town. Uh, with the sheriff there wanted to know more about it. The townspeople wanted to know more about it. And by the way, what, how, what was the one person when, when all this happened for, for quite some period of time, the only information at all that was revealed the whole place was locked down, was this one interview that Victoria Sharp had done. Now, who is she and what was she doing there? She's a singer, okay? She's barely 18, okay? She and her siblings, uh, her mother and, and the rest of the family, I don't know how many of them, um, would go around and they sang gospel songs and things like that. And they had come to the refuge to sing their songs. And so now they're going to this big meeting in the town, next town over, and they're all getting ready to go, and uh, Victoria and her family are going to be the singers, and they're going to sing them. They're going to put on a little bit and everything else. And she missed the ride with her family. So they said, uh, yeah, you can ride with us. So that's why she was in the truck. Okay. And um, so that was one of the people that got out. That was Victoria. Uh, Shauna Cox wasn't supposed to be there either. Uh, what they were doing is they were going to have this meeting with the sheriff and with the townspeople in John Day. And they had, you know, they were just kind of wandering out in the country. They had a video guy that was going to go and film the whole thing. Well, they're all ready to go, and they can't find the video guy. So Shauna says, well, I'll go and I'll run the camera. So that's why she was in the truck. Okay. And one of the things I wanted to do, but we can't, um, I have her last interview. She, she gave an interview. She's under old. Victoria Sharp did that one interview and went into hiding, and she's scared to death. And I don't know where she is. I don't know where she is. Shauna was mad in the wet hand. They arrested her, uh, charged her with some things, turned her loose, um, but then called her back in and gave her a gag order. So now she can't talk to anybody. And um, her the recording from the two women is worth listening to. That is the only real evidence that's gotten out. And it looks pretty outrageous. And what changed, by the way, from the friendly talk to all of a sudden there's an ambush and a shootout was really, in my opinion, Oregon's 
non-elected bisexual governor who can't be recalled because she was never elected in the first place. Okay. So that is our Governor Kate, who was very upset about this, and she'd been talking, we don't know how much, with uh, Lynch and with the Obama administration, but she issued a directive to the Oregon State Police if you want to be historical about it, it was like, who, who will rid me of this troublesome rancher? Okay. And so the rancher is all of a sudden ambushed and shot down in a situation that is dubious in a lot of ways. Um, and we have the FBI video and everything. Uh, where I am, so that that's kind of the background of the whole thing. And it went nuclear when the governor got involved. My belief is, uh, do I know anything? You don't know anything until people have testified and seen the evidence. Uh, but by, I pretty firmly believe from a lot of different sources that the shooting was done by the Oregon State Police on the orders of the governor. Okay. Um, however, when I first heard that, the official story was the official story was the FBI was only there to observe. So this is not like a Ruby Ridge. This is not like a Waco. They were just there. They got out the silver bowl, washed their hands, and said, "Okay, all you state guys." Handle this, okay? The key things to remember from Burns to me are, are four numbers. $43. Can you see that? 43 are the number of political prisoners that are Use a blood marker. without bail. <coughs> no ability to speak to anybody. Okay. Until yesterday, it was 42, but they got one more yesterday. Okay. The is Jake Ryan. I don't know him. Repeat that again 43. What? 43 people are arrested under federal charges and are being held incommunicado. Can't talk to anybody. Okay. In relation to this. In relation to this, um, yes, but some of them had nothing to do with Oregon. Some of them were just out of the bunker building. They Some are exactly right. Years, yeah. Right? In, in relation to what I don't know because none of that has been published. But allegedly, it is because of the fact that they all had something to do with either being a Bundy and being there, or with being in Burns, except one of them is just a reporter, okay? One of them is Trump's campaign manager from New Hampshire, who did go to the Bundy Ranch back in, what, 2014, but he didn't even get there until it was all over with. And what he did is he, he stayed for a week or so, he did some administrative work, and help them collect their videotapes and pictures and everything and make a documentary and then he went back. So he wasn't even there when the, when the book. So I don't know. Okay. And um, I don't know what these people are charged with. Uh, I, I don't know. They're all federal charges is all I know. And I don't think they've been made public. Okay. But, that's, but anyway, there are 43 people that I know of as of today on my blog the picture is 42, and they have them all named. But they were there was, they they did this sweep, and they went to a bunch of different states, and they just arrested people. I don't know most of the people. Yes. And what does the Constitution say? Don't they have to charge you? Allegedly, they have been charged with something, but I don't know. Okay, I do not know. Okay, but but the thing I do know is there are 43 people being charged, and you're absolutely right. And stop here, I'm 
as of today, stuff is still floating in. Like, uh, yeah, yesterday they arrested uh, Jake Ryan, who's apparently from Oregon. Uh, Bundy is back in Nevada now. Cliven, his lawyer met, didn't reveal the charges, but what the lawyer said is he's a political prisoner. He hasn't done anything. He hasn't done anything violent, and you have no reason to hold him. So that's as of today. Okay. So I don't. I can't answer some questions. But there are 43 people in prison facing federal charges, include and one that isn't in prison. She's facing federal charges. 43 is a key number. Nine is another key number. That's the number of times that Finnegan was shot. Yes. So why did they single out LaVoy? <coughs> he was probably the spokesman. Here's the interesting thing. And I have I have friends in law enforcement, some of them have retired, who want to go over and testify if this ever gets to court. Because no matter what you do, you have the, the narrow issue of was this a righteous shoot? But in addition to that, they, they, they unloaded a lot. Number one, nobody was charged with anything at the time this happened. There were no charges against anybody. There were no arrest warrants out against anybody. They tried to make like it was a traffic stop, and that lasted for about three hours, and that was long. So what right did they have to apprehend them? I don't know. The lawyers will have to set that, sort that out. Okay. But... So what right did they have to, to do that? I, I have no idea how to justify it. But there is some good news, I think. I am convinced, all we get through all these numbers, 43 political prisoners, nine. Okay, Finnegan was shot nine times, according to the family autopsy, which is different than the government thing where they said it was a righteous shooting and they said he was shot three times. I'll use one. Five. Five is the number of FBI agents that are up on a criminal investigation for lying about the incident and covering up evidence. And they were whisked out of state of Okay. Because they swore they never fired any shots, but they found some of the bullets in the truck. Okay. And it was a whole elite FBI team. One guy said, oh no, I didn't shoot. No, he didn't shoot. So they all swore they didn't shoot. But they shot. And some people saw them going around picking up bullet cases, front yard shell cases afterwards. So they keep contaminating the price. <laughs> Two, of course, is the only witnesses that are not in prison. And that's the two women, <laughs> Victoria, in hiding somewhere, scared to death, and John Cox. Okay, what else do we know? Now, the thing that we, so I'm giving you not legal testimony, I'm giving you stuff that people have fed to me that fits together. The ambush was clearly pre-planned. Okay. It was what they call a dead man's uh, road It was around the blind curve and a narrow road with snowbanks on both sides. And so I think he was supposed to crash into the cars, but he, but he didn't. He went off into the really snow. But it was clear that this was pre-planned. It was a kill zone. Okay. They had they had so changed those pictures. this happened, I think the thing that made me, some, probably it was one of the more <laughs> irritating things. So all this happens and we have people dead and other people in jail. And what's going on here? And is all this force justified and everything else? Um, Oregon's two senators, the senior senator is white and they gave a press conference. Why would you, why would you use such extreme force? Why does answer the virus was spread. Okay. That okay. virus is the Constitution. Um, okay. The FBI video, 
Uh, I've had friends that I trust. I've looked at the only evidence that anybody has seen about the shooting that has been put into the public domain and is official is this very low quality FBI black and white video. It's terrible. Okay? And I've looked at it. I, yes. I was able to blow up some sections of it and it, they, it was an ambush. They, they were shooting at the first stop. They were shooting. Right, they deny that. But that makes it all irrelevant. They, they were shooting at the first stop. They were shooting before he even got out of the truck. And they kept shooting after he was dead. Yeah. Okay? So, yeah. So, basically, all those things are true. Even, but what, what we focus on and what, what they found... Now you got to remember, police are, are really tense these days because now um, they're getting killed by these Black Lives Matter people and everything else. And so is it a righteous shoot or not? And you can look at that video. I have, I've had friends do it. I've had friends in law enforcement. And is he reaching for a gun? Is he grabbing at a wound? I can't tell. But, okay. Some, some people know, yeah, like you just said, if you look at it right, you know he, he didn't, okay? It, the, what the Supreme Court ruling is, is you can use force if he's reaching for a weapon. Was he, wasn't he? We don't know yet because there's no evidence. That, that, that FBI video is inadequate, in my opinion. But, here's the good news. I mean, you, know, you want to ask right now? Sure, I, I mean, I... You asked the question whether it's a righteous shooting or not, and I think based on the evidence we have at this point, unless you have other evidence outside of what everyone else has seen, it's difficult to draw that conclusion. And I know what is so important under these circumstances is to be objective. Every single person in this room loves the Bundys. The Bundys have been here. Clive and Ammon have been here. But at the same time, as I look at that video, I'm not able to draw a conclusion that law enforcement was not justified because we don't know. If he would, for me, the, the critical question under those circumstances is very simple. Totally agree. If he's responding to being shot as he brings his hand down, it is not a justified shooting. If he has not been shot and he's coming down and the officers reasonably believe he's going for a gun, it's a righteous shooting. Absolutely. You, so, I totally agree with that statement. Okay. That's the way the law is. I've, had, I've looked at it. I can't tell either. I've had friends who are professionals look at it. I looked at it slowed down, stabilized, or can't tell, all right? But here's the good news. There is some good news. I am 99% sure that the shooting was done by the Oregon State Police, okay? Not 100%, but 99%. And one, one thing that, it may even be more than 99%, that's very good news. So why do you see that as significant? I'm going to tell you. Okay. <laughs> the law in Oregon requires, is very specific, the enabling law and the Oregon State Police procedures require that any incidents like that, lethal use of force, have to be completely documented. Okay? <laughs> completely documented means body cams, Vehicle cams with audio and video, okay? All the communications tapes, all the minutes from the meetings, all the orders that were issued, and things like that. So if the Oregon State Police did the shooting, which I believe to be true, they have to produce that evidence. That's what I believe since the beginning. And I believe, like you, after looking at it for a long time, I can't tell. Reasonable people differ, okay? If you look at that FBI video, you know, even if everything else was wrong, was the guy who pulled the trigger justified or not? Can't tell. But if you saw the Oregon State Police evidence, you would know for sure because you would have high resolution on the ground, close in video, you would have audio with the video so you'd know the sequence of the shots, you would also hear the shot, the shooting, before he even got out of the truck. And the reason I think that evidence exists is because they went absolutely nutsoid in Oregon as I was leaving, 
they had a short session of the legislature that was only to meet for 45 days or something. They tried to rush a bill through. The law says the Oregon State Police have to keep all that evidence and it belongs to the public. They have to release it, okay? So they tried to pass legislation to delay the release of that evidence. Ex post facto, but isn't that it would have been, right? Sure. Yeah. Okay, they were going to pass a law. Well, they, they always have a reason, okay? And, what, what, you know, all these violent ranchers, they'd probably come after the Oregon State cop to pull the trigger. You know, they had that, that kind of a rationalization. So they're rushing this emergency bill through, using a lot of clout to do it. They got it through the Oregon House. It passed. It died in the Senate. The legislature adjourned, and it will not be back until January. So we have that long to get that evidence out that they are they have to have, and I think they do have it, or they wouldn't have tried so hard to get that bill through. Okay. Yes. So if the Oregon State Police are the ones that did the shooting, then what were the FBI shooting at? They had the casings in their vehicle that they were five or arrested or, or charged. I'm missing something. Yeah. yeah, well, this is why the five FBI agents got whisked out of state and they're under a criminal investigation because they swore they. The FBI official position was as they were just observing, they didn't fire anything. Then it turned out they did fire something. And in fact, they lied about it. Okay? And some say they picked up the brass afterwards and they had different color brass. Okay? So they got, they're gone, they're out of state, don't know. That's a very good question. Okay? And there's an even better question. There's, there's several things I want to know. I want to see all of the Oregon State Police evidence, and if he wasn't shot by the Oregon State Police, I want to know that too, but I think he was, okay? Mm -hmm. Did you ever look at the crime scene in San Bernardino where they marked where every bullet hit and everything else? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was doing a radio interview down there. That's a different story, but um, they, didn't, they didn't do that here. Okay, if you do it, if it's this big a deal, you, you do that. They didn't do it. Why didn't they do it? What issues was the Oregon State Police given? There are rumors that the Oregon State Police had been told that these ranchers were violent criminals with arrest records out. Now, that wasn't testified to, that's just a rumor. But you need to get that on the record, and if they were told that, who told them that? Okay. And the biggest question I have, well, I got a lot of big questions. Why is our governor still there? Um, the, um, the other thing that's kind of interesting, there was an occupation, but it was not by these dozen or so ranchers at the refuge. The refuge was never occupied. They were camping there. And they had a lady, a legislator, come in from Nevada. And, you know, she looked at all up. And there's people came to us, civilians, law enforcement came. But there was, it was never occupied. They were just camping there. And by the way, the director got a lot of criticism because she had over almost 2,000 uh, homeless, druggy, violent kind of people camping in the parks in Portland for over two years, and they were committing crimes and knifing each other and dealing drugs and everything else. And so everybody, not everybody, but the, the people in the legislature said, well, what's with these 12 ranchers? You got 2,000 people in Portland occupying the parks and whoosh, they're all gone. Okay, they're not there anymore. <laughs> um, but there's one more question that I really would like to know the answer to, and this one is, is very scary to me. Kind of all this idea of conspiracy kind of things. Who was there in Ernst? Well, we had the sheriff, we had the FBI, but we had other people. The other people, the locals, they were very easily identified because they brought their own equipment. Uh, they were they were professional shooters. They had body armor, they had automatic weapons. 
and they would do not show any ID. They never named that tag said, uh, well, if asked, they said, we're here to support local law enforcement. They had the uh, airport barricaded. They were harassing ranchers. And I really would like to know who these people were and who they were working for. Was it the BLM? Was it the UN? Okay. Was it somebody else? Okay. But they were there, and they were the scary ones. And, and the, 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 the town was terrified. Okay, so basically it was like a, a military occupation of a small town. And then finally, you know, full year two, I asked General Tutte, what's going on here? Well, Hillary Clinton and the uranium, the uranium one, you know, the deal she made with the Clinton Foundation, which a third of the U.S. is uranium. The uranium ones, the Canadian company, the Goddard Mall, uh, they are mining in the next county and they want to develop where that ranch is. And the papers to do that were filed a couple of years ago. Uh, except it isn't the rainy one anymore, it's called Morgan Energy. So they set up Morgan Company. So, I mean, you, you could just lose yourself down these rabbit holes. But there's so much wrong with it. And it's a precedent for the whole country. Uh, what I do is, I, I can track how people are reacting to my novels and my blog. The blog post I have up now that gets the most attention all over the world, uh, and it really is kind of a legacy of uh, <coughs> Enoch, which by the way is <coughs> the worst terrorist attack since 9 11 in the US. One more day than the uh, And it was the first one since Obama took office that was officially designated a terrorist attack. Because told me the FBI director, against Obama's orders, declared it a terrorist attack. Good for him. Okay. So, um, weird stuff. Um, but I don't know. I, I, I think that the fact that the shooting was probably the Army State Police is going to be awful. I also think. And I say that on my blog. I don't say this happened and here's the result. This is what you should do. I just present all the facts I know of. And I say the courts are going to have to sort this out. And there needs to be more evidence. The Oregon State Police evidence. And there are a whole bunch of constitutional issues still. Okay? Um, and it isn't about Oregon. This is much bigger than Oregon. It isn't about Nevada. So everybody, oh, okay, so I put these things up on my blog. The thing that goes ballistic all over the world, everybody's terrified of the jihadists, and nobody knows how many are here, so I, I've got a blog post that kind of gives different estimates of that. Uh, I think he comes to Daniel Valley. He comes and talks a lot of Tea Party, you know. Yeah, he, 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 he's collected some, he's a good he's a terrible three star or something. He's collected some information. The FBI has told us some things. So all of the real world stuff I do, that blog post gets the most attention because people would really like to know how many jihadists are here. The answer is a lot. And the government doesn't know. Okay. Or says that yes. Do you know how many hits? Because I know most of the people I know have not even heard of this. What, the jihadists? No, of the Oregon standoff. Oh, the Oregon, the Oregon standoff. Uh, how many hits does that get? Um, what, what I do that I can track exactly is I have circulated, I can tweet that blog post around, and I can send it to hashtags like um, Burns and all this kind of stuff. And every time I do that, I get about 3,000 hits, okay? Um, but the interesting thing, and the others, other things I do get more. The, the jihadist thing gets a lot more. But the interesting thing about the Burns hits is most of them go down deep, deeper and deeper, and they run the stuff and play the links and everything, listen to the testimony. So, 
work, but work, you know, I kind of drowned in data. A year ago, I was doing my old models, and I put out a tweet or something, and a few dozen people responded, it would be interesting. Now I get 200,000 a month. Uh, a day will be 2,000, then maybe a year 10. And if I mentioned to you how it gets to be a year 10, as far as the uh, burns things, it's much less than that, but it's the second most popular one, and it's the one they drill down on more. But most people that aren't close to the Mondays or close to this part of the world aren't even aware of it. It's not a national <coughs> news. It hasn't been reported on by Fox. There is a major news guy who's, who's been... Uh, who? Oh, I can't Dennis Michael Lynch. Dennis Michael Lynch. Yeah, there's so much reported on it, too. But, but, and it's quite Lewis. It's in the New America. They post a big, big, big page article. Yeah. Well, well, what's going to have to happen is, we, like he said, we need all the evidence presented before we can draw conclusions. And to get all the evidence, it's going to be very um, difficult. You say that it's like Benghazi, but it's small. Okay, it really is. It's an organ of Benghazi. But they've done so many things wrong. Um, I'm actually optimistic. Let me interrupt you to talk. But I think that there are so many things wrong with this. Oh, one more little detail. All this time in the Hammonds thought that. This backfire they set was in response to a lightning caused fire. They had some people come in from Malaysia in um, Idaho to go around and talk to people, and they got an affidavit from somebody who said they, they saw the government setting the first fire. And I told people in the legislature that, friends and that is that even possible? The answer is yes, the government was doing that back in those days. And they were setting wildfires. And we know that because some of them got out of control, damaged property, and they got sued and then the BLM stopped. So there's layer after layer after layer. The one instant everybody wants to talk about is the finish and shooting. You get to get more of this or not. But even if that was the right to shoot, everything else that there was wrong. Okay. And I'm not particularly interested in the, you know, I want to see justice. And if some, but they set this thing up to make it dangerous. If, they, if somebody from the federal government told the Oregon State Police that were, these were dangerous criminals, violent criminals, with warrants out for them, they would be real tense. We would just ask you for trouble. And if some guy thinking he's reacting to a gun and pulls the trigger, I can be a little forgiving about that if people make the same. <coughs> I don't know who brought mercenaries in the world. So that's the best way. Any other questions? How long I share? Did he take any credit for it or did he just step off to the side of the calendar? Yes. Uh, I, I think the way I read that, um, and I don't live in that county, um, he's a movie show. And I think he's just scared that he was under a lot of pressure to get the ranchers to leave. But he wasn't confronted about it. He wasn't going to go murder anybody or anything. So I don't think he had, I don't think he was helpful. I don't think he had a lot of either. I do think the other people was. And I think she created a situation that she has to make responsibility for. More questions? Uh, it's my opinion that Governor Kate is a corrupt governor. Uh, how much do you trust the courts to actually um, get to the bottom of this and get justice for the Hammonds and the Bundys? Uh, or is, is, I mean, is the corruption much deeper from what you interview people? Here's the question. I think that the, that the government will do the right thing when it has no other choices. 
<laughs> and we'll have no other choices if Trump or Cruz or anyone like them is elected. As far as the Obama administration, I mean, the Hillary Clinton <laughs> whole world on fire with Benghazi. I mean, the whole, the whole Middle East is in flames. So there's so many crises. But I'm optimistic enough that I think the only way this will, will, will ever see justice and truth and things like that, it's a lot of different things. It's the IRS, it's the BLM, it's on and on and on and on. This is one incident. But this one is so outrageous and so humble, maybe a pull on this part of it to unravel things. Because all these arrests, what were they arrested for? Very interesting. The day before the finding was released of, of, of the alleged shoe, okay. um, Lynch came to Portland and gave a speech, and she said, Yes, we're going to use all the power of the federal government to do something about these rancher terrorist people. Mm -hmm. And that's what started all the arrests. So she, there's her fingerprints. Um, so is it a federal policy? Absolutely. Do we have a corrupt government? government? We sure do. Do we have a judge who's probably corrupt? Yeah, we have a sheriff who at the minimum is pretty freaking scared. But we have a lot of patriots out there. And this is one that is so outrageous. And it's simple enough. And this has been a nice on the other side of the planet. I actually think it can be resolved. But I don't think it's going to be resolved. I'm not talking about probably won't get it resolved until after the election. The main thing is to be able to go away. John, would you wear your clothes like for your blog? Is that different than your office site, right? right? Yes. Is that right? You don't have a black pen with me? Yeah. You have a black.